as we allow others to come in. Um, Brother Joshua is a God Birmingham uh, teacher. And to my left is our beloved Brother Mac, who will be reading today. And as we get ready to commence, um, we want everybody to turn your Bibles to Exodus, the 20th chapter. We will read verses 1 through 17. <clears throat> Y'all all right today? Yes, sir. I know it's cold outside, but we're going to warm up today. Warm up the bus. All right, a few more coming in, and we will get started. Go ahead, Mac. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord would not hold him guiltless that take this name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Mm -hmm. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Amen, amen. Please turn your Bibles to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. And we're going to read verses 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. Right after Proverbs. Make it plain, brother. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Amen, amen. Let us turn to Revelation 22, and we will read verses 14 and 15. The last book, the last chapter of the last book, verses 14 and 15. What did it say, brother? Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Brothers and sisters, once again, as I like to always say, that is the formula to salvation. Fear God, keep his commandments, that's it. No bells and whistles, just obedience. And understanding that obedience, we have to understand that there is a reward for that. Now, it seems like when we read the word and we come to class, we hear the lessons, it's like it's the same thing over and over. Well, guess what? We're having the same sin occurring over and over. So it's necessary. And with that obedience, um, you will understand that God will intervene, a kind of divine intervention, if you will. And he will deliver you in times of trouble. And that's the title of today's lesson. Deliverance during times of trouble. We're going to look at just some of the things it takes to get that deliverance, whether it's even a, a, a certain uh, ill or sin that you're fighting with, 
all the way to being in a position to where you could be losing your life. But ultimately, there's a deliverance where the Lord will actually come and gather us and take us home. And not heaven, but brothers and sisters. So, that being said, let's go to the first spot. Job, the seventh chapter. We are familiar with Job, his struggles, and his triumph. But he's going to let us know something about this life we deal with. Because through life, you do have the ups and downs. You have the long nights in which you can't get your rest. And Job talks about brothers and sisters. But the Lord is the one that brings us out of it all. Job 7 and 1. What does the book say, brother? Is there not an appointed time to man upon earth? Mm -hmm. Are not his days also like the days of a hireling? The, these are questions, but these are facts. Is there not an appointed time to man upon the earth? Yes, there is. We are born, we live, and we die. Think it don't happen, keep living. You will find out that you do die. Secondly, it says, are not his days also like the days of a hireling? Meaning a servant or somebody, even a slave. But even those individuals have a day that they start their jobs, and they have a time that they stop their jobs. So that's how life is, basically. Go ahead and read, brother. As a servant earnestly desire the shadow, and as a hireling looking for the reward of his work. Go ahead. So am I made to possess months of vanity. Yes. And wearisome nights are appointed to me. What about when I lie down? When I lie down, I say, when shall I rise? Mm -hmm. And the night be gone. Yes. And I'm full of tossing to and fro until the dawning of the day. See, we use terms like I'm tossing and turning all night. That ain't nothing new. Job said it right here. And that's how it is in life. The things come your way. You're like, Lord, I need some deliverance. Because I'm dealing with a terrible time right now. So he says, when I lie down, I say, when shall I arise? Lord, I'm just ready to wake up tomorrow because tonight is giving me some problems. But then the same thing happens on the flip side. You, lay down, you, you, you wake up, you're like, I'm ready to lay down and go to bed, Matt. So much drama. So much trouble in the world, as the singer says. So he's letting us know this is how it is. All right? Skip down and read verse number 13. We're going 13 through 21. What the book say? When I say my bed shall comfort me, mm -hmm. my couch shall ease my complaint. You think so? Go ahead and read. Then thou scares me with dreams yeah, do. and terrifies me through visions. Because you can't get comfortable. It's just impossible. There's so much involved in this life that, man, when I lay down in the bed, it's going to be all good. I don't have a bed, so let me lay on the couch. It's much more comfortable there. Guess what? I'm going to scare you in your dreams. And you have visions, you won't get comfortable either. Go ahead and read, brother. So that my soul chooses strangling yeah, dude. and death rather than my life. Well, how do you feel about it, Matt? I loathe it. Meaning you hate it? Go ahead. I would not live always. Uh huh. Let me alone. Yes. For my days are vanity. Man, just leave me alone. It's worthless. I don't have no deliverance, so why even bother with living? Mm -mm. You sit there and you deal with the God of Israel, you will understand how important this life is and how he can deliver you out of situations. Go ahead and read, Mac. What is man that thou shouldest magnify him mm -hmm. and that thou shouldest set thine heart upon him? He's got a big plan for man. That is what is man. Go ahead and read. And that thou shouldest visit him every morning yes. and try him every moment. Go ahead, Mac. How long would thou not depart from me? Nor let me alone till I swallow my spirit. Down my spittle. Not going to leave you alone because we got business to handle. You got commandments to keep. You got sin to get rid of. I'm not going to leave you alone. I don't care if you're trying to swallow your spittle. Mm -mm -mm. We got work to do. You got to work on delivering you from this sinful way of living, brothers and sisters. All of us, by the way. Go ahead and read. I have sinned. Yeah, you have. What shall I do unto thee, O thou preserver of men? Go ahead. Why hast thou set me as a mark against thee? Uh-huh. So that I am a burden to myself. 21. And why dost thou not pardon my transgression and take away mine iniquity? Mm -hmm. For now shall I sleep in the dust, uh -huh. and thou shalt seek me in the morning, but I shall not be. You'll sleep in the dust, and you shall not be because you are sleeping in the dust. But there's going to come a time when you will awake from that sleep. Now, the question is, will you be a righteous, uh, where you have a uh, righteous rap sheet or one of those filthy rags that never got clean, brothers and sisters. This is what Job is talking about. He's saying, why does that not pardon my transgression and take away my iniquity? But we will understand under the blood of Christ that will happen, brothers and sisters. But you've got to commit to it and say, Lord, I want to do all that you say and I will be obedient to it. M make sense? Yeah. All right. I'm going to warm you up. I told you. Let's go to Psalm 11. 
The next book after Job, Psalm 11. We're going to read 1 through 7. Even though we deal with this stuff in life, brothers and sisters, God is a defender, okay? He will not leave you so defenseless and in a situation that there's no hope for me. Of course there's hope. But you've got to make sure you fall in line with what he wants you to do. Psalm 11, we're going to read verses 1 through 7. What does the Bible say, Brother Mac? In the Lord put I my trust. Uh-huh. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain. Go ahead. For lo, the wicked bend their bows. Yes. They make ready their arrow upon the string. Yes. That they may privately shoot at the upright in heart. So, brothers and sisters, even though we may have our own little things that happen to us that we may cause most of the time, there are people out there that literally want to put you in a bad situation, that could care less about you getting your study on. I had a sister in another class tell me that she tries her best to study her word, but she has an unruly son who lives with her who would not respect that. And so he actually turns his music as loud as it goes so she can't even have that peace of mind of reading. In your house, not somebody in the streets. I said, you need to put him in the streets then. Because right. peace of mind is very important, brothers and sisters. And God wants you to have that peace of mind because he's trying to do a lot with us in this life and in the one to come. Go ahead and read, Mac. If the foundations be destroyed, mm -hmm. what can the righteous do? Can't do nothing. Go ahead and read. The Lord is in his holy temple. Yes. The Lord's throne is in heaven. Yes. His eyes behold. Yes. His eyelids try. Yes. The children of men. So it says the Lord sees it all. He looks down and he's looking and says, his eyelids try like this. Let me see, they doing what I say. Yeah, he doing it. She ain't doing it. Let me kill her. You know what I'm saying? Or let me help her out and bump upside her head so she will do better. He is trying to test us all, Jew and Gentile and anybody else alike. Go ahead and read, brother. The Lord try after righteous. Yes, he do. But the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. Go ahead, Matt. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, Amen. fire and brimstone, yes. and an horrible tempest. And what's it, what is this? This shall be the portion of their cup. What you put in is what you're going to get back, basically. And the Lord tries the righteous. He doesn't tempt us with sin. Some people like to wear that out and say, see, I thought God don't tempt. He will try us to see we love him. If we want to obey him and keep his commandments. But for the wicked, keep doing what you're doing. I'm going to flip that same wickedness on you and we're going to have a party. And I'm going to be the one celebrating. This is what God is doing with us and he will deliver us in times of trouble. But don't make sure, excuse me, make sure that you are not the wicked one, brothers and sisters. Verse 7. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. Yes. His countenance doth behold the upright. And he loves right doing. And he will look upon those and bless those that are doing right. Even in times of trouble, brothers and sisters. But we, we need to understand something as we turn to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. We have to not so much try to take everything in our own hands. I'm going to let look, Jesus take the will. Well, let go of it. If you want me. But like I said before, you know, Lord, take the will. Now I'll do my will. See, everybody wants to just sit back and God do this for me. What have you done for him lately? Well, I, I, I do all right sometimes. Sometimes don't cut it. And so we got to understand that vengeance is the Lord's brothers and sisters. In the 10th chapter of Hebrews, our beloved brother Paul makes that known by quoting the Old Testament. And we've got to read it right now. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verses 30 through 31. A few pages turning. Just in case somebody want to take things in their own hands, we need to read this. Verse 30, what did it say? For we know him that have said, yes. vengeance belongeth unto me. Yeah, dude. I will recompense, said the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Yes. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So, you notice he didn't say the dead God. Or this statue I got in the corner that I pray to. Not me personally, but you know people do it. And people just lean on that stuff so much, we need to lean on the living God and make sure you don't fall into his hands by doing evil because he will deliver something on you. We just read about that portion that's yours by not doing what he says and committing evil. But if you're righteous, you don't have to worry about falling into the hands of the living God for him to punish you, but rather for him to bless you and to keep you, brothers and sisters. Make sense? So vengeance is the Lord's. Even though vengeance is the Lord's and he does things for us, sometimes we have to also do for ourselves. And what he'll do is he'll work in the background and he'll orchestrate everything. 
might change the mindsets of some of your enemies. But everybody here got enemies. If you don't know it, keep looking, keep living. And you'll realize who they are. But he will work in the background and he will change the counsel of them. That's what the Bible says. So let's go over to Nehemiah, the fourth chapter. Nehemiah, the fourth chapter. We're going to read verses 1 through 15 and 17 through 20. You notice I spoiled y'all with them little two verse uh, spots. Now we're going to read now. This is Nehemiah 4. We're going to read 1 through 15. And then 17 through 20. See, Israel used to have to, uh, at one point they were trying to rebuild the temple. And enemies would come along, give them all kind of drama. Because it started with Ezra and his clique. Then Nehemiah stepped in, some historians say about 25 years later, to try to keep it going. Well, they had to ward off some of the gainsayers out there. And we were about to read it, but we're going to also know that God is working in the background, brothers and sisters, to deliver them in times of trouble. Nehemiah 4 and 1, what does the book say, brother? But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we built the wall, mm -hmm. he was wroth yes. and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And what did he say? And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, what do these feeble Jews? Uh -huh. Will they fortify themselves? Uh -huh. Will they sacrifice? Uh -huh. Will they make an end in one day? Mm -hmm. Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burnt? Now, obviously, uh, 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 Sambala, you know this is what they're doing. But we have people who despise uh, uh, Israel to this day and make things hard for them to this, uh, uh, to this day. And so he's upset that they're trying to rebuild. But they got permission to rebuild. First with Darius and now with Artaxerxes. But so he is going to lay a snare for them, so he thinks. Go ahead and read, brother. Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone and, wall. And just to do more trash talking, I don't care how strong or how fortified it is, if a fox walked on it, he could tear it down. Not when the God of Israel has your back. Not when the God of Israel can deliver you in times of trouble. Go ahead and read, Mac. Hear, O oh, our God, for we are despised, uh -huh. and turn their reproach upon their own heads, yes. and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. So right now is a prayer from Nehemiah. Okay, I'm hearing about all this hatred they have for us, how they're preventing us from building, building this back. Lord, please hear me and see what we're dealing with. Go ahead and read, brother. And cover not their iniquity, uh -huh. and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee. Go ahead. For they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So what happened next? Did we give up? Did we say, well, Lord, you can't deliver us? Are we going to stop building? What does the Bible say, brother? So built we the wall. Yes. And all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. Yes. For the people had a mind to work. For the people had a mind to work. For And how we deal with it. For the people had a mind to come to class on time. For the people had a mind to cook for the feast. To even speak to their neighbor and say happy Sabbath. You got to have a you have to have a mind for it, brothers and sisters. Talking to me too. Got to have a mind to want to take your time and put the lessons together. Take your time and don't talk fast, Josh. That too. How to, you have to have a mind to work, and then God will see it through. Go ahead. And, what verse was that? That was in the six. Go ahead and seven. But it came to pass that when Sam Ballot and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and Ashdodites yes. heard. That the wall of Jerusalem were made up. Yeah. And the breaches began to be stopped. Yes. Then they were very wrong. And what they do? And conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Even though, brothers and sisters, we'll pray to God sometimes to say, mm, I know that prayer went through. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes you can't stop. I'm not saying being repetitious and saying the same thing over and over and not giving God time to work out that prayer. But even when you, as you see the situation getting worse and worse, you start bringing in the righteous God in every instance of that situation. Watch this. What the book say? Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God. Yes. And said a watch against them day and night because of them. Mm -hmm. And Judah said, the strength of the bears burdens is decayed. Mm -hmm. And there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. Go ahead, Matt. And our adversary said, they shall not know, neither see. Till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. Okay, so we see here that even though they, they are crying out to the Lord, they're praying to the Lord, but they also realize that it's getting to be a lot of work and the burdens are kind of heavy for us. 
And then they're saying, we got a lot of rubbish left over. But you keep building. The same way that things fall in your life, you keep going, you keep pushing. All right? You may, it may look like rubbish to you, but maybe you got to fill out 10 more job applications to get the job. Little things like that, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read, Matt. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dealt, dwelt by them came, they said unto ten times. How many times? They said unto us ten times. Yes. From all places which ye shall return unto us, they will be upon you. Go ahead. Therefore said I in the lower places behind the wall. Yes. And on the higher places. I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. So you can tell me five times, ten times, a thousand times, we don't care. We are going to arm ourselves. And that's what Israel is doing right now. They got everybody involved to handle the business, to protect those that are rebuilding, brothers and sisters. So we have to do that sometimes for brothers and sisters who may be dealing with certain things in life. We be around them, and we encourage them, we protect them. From those, especially trying to get them to not keep the commandments, brothers and sisters. Don't talk to him no more. He's bad business. He doesn't want you to keep God's commandments. And so they are doing the same thing here. Go ahead and read. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people. What did he say? Be not afraid of them. And who should we remember? Remember the Lord. Yes. Which is great and terrible. <laughs> And fight for your brethren, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your houses. Go ahead, Mac. And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their counsel to naught. Yes, sir. That we returned all of us to the wall, every one of us unto his work. Notice there was no fighting yet here. It said that he caused their counsel to not even come together to, 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 to conspire against the Jews. That fell apart all of a sudden. See, God can start the battles before a sword is swung, brothers and sisters. Before a pistol is shot, he can shut it down. And so they say, let's go back and build the wall. Every one of us who has a mind to work. Skip down and read 17 through 20, my brother. What the book say? They which build it on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. Yes. For the builders... For the builders, everyone had his sword girded by his side, and so built it. Yes. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. Go ahead, Mac. And I said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, the work is great and large, and we are separated upon the wall, one far from another. And that is the case. They are rebuilding. Everybody's uh, uh, locked and loaded. In today's time, it will be a twenty-two or a magnum or, or a shotgun. But... We, everybody's putting the work in. We are far from another. But watch what he says in the next verse. Who's going to fight for him, Matt? Go ahead and read. In what place, therefore, ye hear the sound of the trumpet? Resort ye thither unto us. Our God shall fight for us. So even if they come back to try to fight us again, when you hear the trumpet, let's all get back together, get ready, because God is actually going to be the one fighting for us. God is the one that would deliver us even in these, in these uh, terrible times, brothers and sisters. So just giving you a little history lesson there that as it happened then, it shall happen now. And we need to know where our help comes from. Even though they're armed, they might think, well, my sword is what's going to get me to fight them. Your help comes from the Lord, brothers and sisters. And we're going to read it. Psalm 121. We're going to read verses 1 through 8. I actually found an old video of myself when I was about five or six years old and I read this. As a little boy, I got to make a duet with it one day. But nothing like the word of God, brothers and sisters. Psalm 121, we're going to read verses 1 through 8. Psalm 121, verses 1 through 8. What the book say, brother? I will lift up my eyes unto the hills, from which cometh my help. Uh-huh. My help coming from the Lord. My help coming from my money. My help coming from the Lord. From my shotgun. My help coming from the Lord. Which did what? Which made heaven and earth. Uh-huh. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Uh-huh. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Go ahead, Mac. Behold, he keepeth, behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Uh-huh. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Brothers and sisters, we are bragging on God right now. And he will protect you. He is the one that doesn't sleep or slumber. We can feel like we're so strong that we can do anything. As soon as we get tired, we fall asleep. We get weak. We get uh, exhausted. God does not stop. 
and God will continue to deliver. Go ahead and read, brother. The sun shall not smite thee by day, mm -hmm. nor the moon by night. Yes. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. Mm -hmm. He shall preserve thy soul. What did it say? The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. And he did that when they were rebuilding. They're going out, coming in, getting business done. Uh, if you go back and read Nehemiah, they, it was a lot of... Uh, 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 um, economical uh, uh, things happening where they would have to go and buy trees from this entity and go and uh, uh, request this and that and the God was blessing that coming in and coming out even though you had all these other nations trying to kill them brothers and sisters but remember they still had to arm themselves but more importantly they had the faith that God was going to intervene for them and we got to have that same faith so um, that was letting you know where your help comes from but Israel knew that they would get that help and they would get comfortable and take it for granted. And we do that to this day. God gets us out of situation. Lord, I ain't going to do it no more. The whole time you're saying that with your eyes closed, you, the, the hands getting busy trying to do it again. And we have to be real with ourselves because there are consequences to that, brothers and sisters. Turn your Bibles to Hosea the 7th chapter. Hosea 7, we'll read verses 1 through 6. And then we'll skip to 9 and 10 and skip again. Because Israel sometimes just can't stop messing up. And we can read where Israel was in captivity more than they were free, brothers and sisters. Should be ashamed of ourselves. Hosea 7 and 1. When you get it, my brother, make it plain. When I would have healed Israel, mm -hmm. then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered. Yes. And the wickedness of Samaria. For they commit falsehood, mm -hmm. and the thief cometh in, yes. and the troop of robbers spoileth it. Yes. And they consider not in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. So that's one thing about Israel. We think God going to forget. He says, I'm going to remember, and y'all keep thinking that I'm going to forget. I won't forget, and then when you keep doing what you're doing, I'm not going to deliver you. Matter of fact, I can deliver you to somebody. Go ahead and read, brother. Now their own doings have beset them about. Yes. They are before my face. Yes. They make the king glad with their wickedness. Yes. And the princesses with their lies. What else? They are all adulterers. Uh-huh. And oven heated by the baker. Uh-huh. Who seek it from raising after he have kneaded the dough until it be leavened. In other words, y'all keep getting crazier and crazier, committing more sin. It's almost like a bread, it's like bread rising. And it don't stop. And you're looking in the oven, man, it's pretty high. It's going to hit the ceiling of the uh, oven. Let it keep going. Our bad behavior is, is, is what it's talking about. That, that is how we need to understand and we need to catch it. Okay, I think it's getting too far now. Let me stop breaking God's commandments. This is what he's trying to get us to see. Go ahead and read, Mac. In the day of our kings, the princes have made him sick with bottles of wine. Mm -hmm. He stretched out his hand with scorners. What else they do? For they have made ready their heart like an oven, mm -hmm. whilst they lie in wait. Their baker sleepeth all night. Yeah. In the morning it burneth as a flaming fire. So the sin is just like the baker falling asleep, and it's still baking in the oven, and eventually it gets burnt up. If you keep sinning, God will burn you up forever, is what it's talking about. So let's be like a, a piece of a, a light bread instead of a big muffin, brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? Nice and flat and leaven, excuse me, unleavened rather, and not be leavened, which is full of sin. What verse was that? In the six. Go ahead and read seven. They I'm, so, are, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Skip down to nine. Nine through ten. What verse nine say, brother? Strangers have devoured his strength. Mm -hmm. He knoweth it not. Yeah. Yeah, gray hairs are here and there upon him. Yet he knoweth not. The gray hairs indicate that you're older and you should have more wisdom and you should make the same mistakes. But yet it's saying here that the gray hairs are here and there are upon him, yet he knoweth not because Israel doesn't take time to say I've done wrong. And they just keep going. And you have young fools and old fools all of a sudden. Food for thought, we should mature as we continue to stand this word, brothers and sisters, and not be doing the same thing we used to do. Skip down, what verse is that, nine? Into nine. Go ahead with ten. And the pride of Israel testifieth to his faith. Yep. And they do not return to the Lord their God, nor seek him for all of this. And have no desire to. Skip down and read 13 through 16, my brother. What the book say? Woe unto them. Uh-huh. For they have fled from me. And what's going to happen to them? Destruction unto them. Yes. Because they have transgressed against me. Yeah. Though I have redeemed them. 
Yet they have spoken lies against me. Go, go ahead, Mac. And they have not cried unto me with their heart. Uh -huh. When they howled upon their beds, uh -huh. they assembled themselves for corn and wine. Yes. And they rebelled against me. You haven't taken time to cry to God from your heart. So before it even comes out of your mouth, you haven't considered in your mind. Maybe I should go for the God of Israel. He's undefeated, you know, instead of going with the losing team. Team Satan. And it lets you know that you will assemble yourselves for the corn and wine. When it's time to party, there's no question to your commitment. But when it's time to do things for God, I get to it later on. I'm a little tired right now. What if God said he was tired, brothers and sisters? Maybe you don't need your breath of life today. Maybe I don't need to bless you and heal your body from sickness. It's a different story when he has to say it. So we need to make sure we are righteous and honest with ourselves. Go ahead and read, Mac. Though I have bound and strengthened their arms, mm -hmm. yet do they imagine mischief against me. And do they go back or what they do? They return, mm -hmm. but not to the most high. But not to the most high. See, you'll return, but you'll go back to the filth you dealt with before. Or you return to Satan. Because he's still irrelevant if you're not keeping God's commandments, brothers and sisters. So they don't return to the most high. What else, Mac? They are like a deceitful boat. Yes. Their princes shall fall by the sword for the rage of their tongue. Yes. This shall be their derision in the land of Egypt. In the land of Egypt, in Birmingham, in the UK, wherever you are, if you break God's commandments, he will bring destruction upon you. So it is important to not put yourself in that situation so that God can deliver you during times of trouble, brothers and sisters. So Israel does this and it doesn't stop. Stay within Hosea, go to the 10th chapter, and we're just going to read verses 1 through 6. There's a payoff to this disobedience. And historically speaking, we're going to show what happens to Israel, and then we're going to move on. Hosea 10, we're going to read verses 1 through 6. Hosea 10, 1 through 6. Make it plain, Matt. Israel is an empty vine. Mm -hmm. He bringeth forth fruit unto himself. According to the multitude of his fruit, he have increased the altars. According to the goodness of his land, they have made goodly images. So they've made, they, they're empty vine. But yet the empty vine is doing their own thing. They bring bringing fruits to themselves. But the Lord wants you to bring fruits, meat for repentance, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Their heart is divided. Mm -hmm. Now shall they be found faulty. Mm -hmm. He shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. Because they never should have had them. He gave you no similitude. He said, worship no other God but me. And your heart is divided. You're double-minded. See, we think that's in the New Testament. Double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Mm -mm. Been going on. Go ahead and read. For now they shall say, we have no king. Because we fear not the Lord. Mm -hmm. What then should a king do to us? They have. They have spoken words, swearing falsely, and making a covenant. Yes. Thus judgment springeth up as a hemlock in the furrows of the field. So, you know, anytime I see a word I've never seen, I have to look it up. So when it said uh, they have spoken words, swearing falsely, and making a covenant, it says this judgment springeth up as a hemlock in the furrows of the field. So let's look at the furrow. Furrow is, you, you see people tilling, making a garden, the little paths they make. That's a furrow. But a hemlock, I had to look that up. It is one of the deadliest plants in the world, brothers and sisters. It is considered the deadliest one in North America. A hemlock, if you were to eat just a little bit of it, it will shut down your nervous system, it will cut off your lungs, and it will ultimately kill you. The Lord say Israel is like a hemlock, brothers and sisters. We are deadly, and it just takes a little bit of us to kill us all. So we need to be mindful of what we're doing to God and understand that we can be deadly when we are disobedient, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read, brother. The inhabitants of Samaria shall fear because of the calves of Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. For the people thereof shall mourn over it. Yes. And the priests thereof that rejoiced on it. Yes. For the glory thereof because it is departed from it. And what's going to happen? It shall be carried unto Assyria for a present to King Jerob. Yes. Ephraim shall receive shame and Israel shall be ashamed of his own counsel. Because God's going to shut us down. We go into captivity. We lose. We forget our identity. Number one, num excuse me. Number one, we forget our God. Then we forget our identity, and it's just like a domino effect. We get worse and worse and worse, and we become that hemlock, brothers and sisters. So this is the things that are done that we do as a people, and then God steps away and He says, "I'm going to let somebody else have you." Then you find yourself in situations where, why is this happening to us? Why me? Why not you? Is the question. 
So we will find ourselves in those situations, but we still need to remember to call on God. Even though it can be real tight, call on God, brothers and sisters. Turn your Bible over to 2 Kings, the 6th chapter. 2 Kings, the 6th chapter, and we're going to go in and out of 2 Kings just for a little bit, brothers and sisters. We're going to read verses 8 through 14. I know yours is different. I got you. The printing didn't get right, I guess. The 2 Kings, we're going to read uh, 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 verses 8 through 14, and then 16 through 23. Because Israel's going to find themselves in a situation to where the king of Syria wants to take, take them over. And he doesn't stop. And we're going to read about that and how God jumps in and helps out the people. 2 Kings, verses 6. I mean, excuse me. 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 8 through 14, then we'll skip. 2 Kings 6, 8 through 14. What the book say, brother? Then the king of Syria warred against Israel yes. and took counsel with his servants, saying, What did he say? In such and such a place shall be my camp. Go ahead. And the man of God said unto the king of Israel, saying, mm -hmm. Beware that thou pass not such a place, yes. for thither the Syrians are come down. Yes. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there. Not once nor twice. So the king of Syria wanted to come along and take, take, take down the people. He said, this is going to be my camp. And so you got, a man of God, you got a man of God going to the king saying, hey, this is going to happen. This is what they're doing. We found out this intel. And so they are saved once or twice in the situation. But the king of Syria is not stopping, brothers and sisters. He is trying to cause trouble for Israel. But remember, the Lord will come in and intervene and deliver you. Go ahead and read, Mac. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled mm -hmm. for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, <laughs> What did he say, Matt? Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? So, it, you know, so it, 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 um, the, the heart of the king of Syria was troubled because every time he tried to cut up, cut them off, they find a way to get out of it. And so now we got to figure out, you know, who's going to stand for Israel? Who's going to uh, uh, um, um, uh, 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 make sure this doesn't happen? Go ahead and read. And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telling the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. So Elisha gets the information, passes it along to the king, and that's how they're able to evade them at every turn. What verse is that, brother? In the 12. Go ahead and read. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. He's where? In Dothan. You know, I looked at that and said, Mobile, Dothan, Panama City. But see, they get them, uh, all these places, they get them, these names out the Bible, brothers and sisters. That's a town called Boaz. Ain't too many Israelites there, but it's a town called Boaz. But he said, me down in Dothan. All right? Uh, read verse 14, brother. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and could pass the city about. See, just because you find out where they are, you ain't going to win if God's with them, all right? So they said, they're down in Dothan. Let's get all the horses and chariots and try to take Israel out. Skip down and read 16 through 23. What the book say, brother? And he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now, this is not a loose statement. There's a young man saying, you know, what are we going to do, Alicia? This is a tight situation. He said, listen, man. We actually got the protection from God. He said, fear not for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. But I'm looking around. I don't see the them. I see the us. And the us is scared. Us is scared, Alicia. <laughs> but I see the them. I don't understand what you're talking about. See, a lot of times God will intervene by working through his servants to show you exactly what he's about to do. Go ahead and read, brother. And Alicia prayed and said, mm -hmm. Lord, I pray thee. Open his eyes that he may see. What he do? And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, yes. and he saw. And what did he see, man? And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Now wait a minute. But I didn't see this before. God help him see. God help this brother to stop selling dope. God help have this sister to stop committing adultery. Help them see. And then when you allow yourself to see, God will show it to you. And it said, he see chariots of fire. On your own time, read Psalm 68 and 17. It said the chariots of the Lord are thousands upon 20,000s of his angels, brothers and sisters. So now he sees what's going down and where the protection is coming from. 
What verse is that, Matt? In the 17. Go ahead and read. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, yes. Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. Uh -huh. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Go ahead. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, uh -huh. neither is this the city. Yes. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom ye seek. Yep. But he led them to Samaria. So he asked the Lord in this terrible time, to smite the Syrians with blindness. And it worked, brothers and sisters, all by his words, but that powerful God working in the background. Then he said, but we're not going to stay here in Dothan. All right? 251 area code about to change, brothers and sisters. We're going up to Samaria. Okay, Samaria, I guess, but we, we, we see the God working with you. I guess we'll follow you. So he says this, but watch what happens next with what the people do. Go ahead, Matt. And it came to pass yeah. when they were coming to Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. Mm -hmm. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw. And behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. Go ahead. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, what he say? when he saw them, my father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? Now, you know, they, they've been trying to kill us, brother. So can we? They blind now, so, you know, I got a bunch of swords back there. We can go ahead and kill them. Can we kill them? I mean, they are our enemies. Should we just, you know, avenge ourselves? Remember earlier, brothers and sisters, vengeance is the Lord's. Let him handle it. He's handling it right now, so give him time. What did what I listen to tell him, brother? And he answered, thou shalt not smite them. Wouldst thou smite those whom hast thou taken in captivity with thy sword and with thy bow? And what should you do, brother? Set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go to their master. He said feed them. Because vengeance is not yours. You were in a time of trouble, God came in and delivered you. So why you go, the man is already down on the ground, so why put your foot on his neck? Feed them so they can go back to their master. And then they can tell him about this God of Israel. See, you got to let, let God get the glory now. So he said, don't kill him. What verse was that? In the 22. Go ahead. And he prepared a great provisions for them. Go ahead. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away. Yes. And they went to their master. Yes. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. And they didn't. They said, we ain't going back into Israel. Now, we're going to read this again in just a moment where they followed them into Samaria. They just didn't give up. All right. And it's like that in life. You might come out of a situation. You're like, man, I'm in this situation again. Satan don't give up, brothers and sisters. So we see here where the Lord provided and then we provided by giving them provision and they went on their way. Turn your Bibles over to Romans, the 12th chapter, because this ain't nothing new, brothers and sisters. The same way they were to give them something by defeating them, our beloved brother Paul is going to say the same thing to those that do you wrong. Romans 12, we're going to read 17 through 21. Romans 12. 17 through 21. You got to treat your image right. I know it's hard, brothers and sisters. A good broken jaw feels good to your enemy. But Lord said, uh-uh. You got to treat them right. Romans 12, 17 through 21. What the book say, brother? Recompense no man evil for evil. But do what? Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it? If it be possible, as much as lieth in you. Live peaceably with all men. Go ahead, Mac. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself. But what? But rather give place unto wrath. But for what, Mac? For it is written, yes. vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. Again, we see it again, but what does he say next, brother? Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. Yes. If he thirst, give him drink. Yes. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Finish it out, Mac. Be not overcome of evil. But overcome evil with good. Didn't we just read that? When they were uh, in Dothan, I mean, when they landed in Samaria, he said, hey, man, don't, don't, don't kill them. Give them something to eat and send them on their way. They heaped coals on their heads, brothers and sisters, when they did that. Mm. So that is how you operate because you know God going to handle the business. All right. Turn your Bible uh, over to uh, Luke, the sixth chapter. And the Lord Jesus, with a J, it's going to tell us the same thing. Luke 6, we're going to read 35 through 36. So Paul said, Jesus is going to say the same thing, brothers and sisters, and vice versa. This is Luke, the sixth chapter. I must have been typing fast. I put Luke's with an S in here. I know I was tired. Luke, the sixth chapter. We're going to read 35 through 36. 
Make it plain, Mac. But love your enemies mm -hmm. and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. Mm -hmm. And your reward shall be great. Uh -huh. You shall be the children of the highest. For what, For Mac? he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. See, we read in places where he'll let it rain on the just and the unjust. The book just said that he will, uh, he's kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. So if he's kind to them, you don't need to jump in and try to deal with them to get revenge. Let him handle it. He's already the one in control anyway. Go ahead and read 36, brother. Be ye therefore merciful, as, as your father also is merciful. We know that if we keep these commandments that we can become God, brothers and sisters. So why don't we do things that he does? Be merciful in the flesh right now. As he in the spirit is merciful, brothers and sisters. So he can deliver you during times of trouble. And in those times, that stuff can seem very planned out sometimes. It can be like, well, what did I do wrong? I mean, uh, is, is, am I going through something like Job did? Sometimes stuff happens by chance, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Even though it may seem crazy, it can happen by chance. But when it happens, know that you can call upon the Lord in that situation. Let's, let's look at the chance. We're going to look at one verse here. Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter. We're going to read verse 11. Life is like a race, brothers and sisters. It don't, it, it's no different for the one that's slow at pace or the one that can run fast. It don't matter if you are rich or poor. It doesn't matter if you are victorious when the uh, uh, Syrian army has came at you or if you lost. Time and chance actually happens to any of us. Ecclesiastes 9 and 11, what does the book say, brother? I returned and saw under the sun mm -hmm. that the race is not to the swift, mm -hmm. nor the battle to the strong, mm -hmm. neither yet bread to the wise, mm -hmm. nor yet riches to men of understanding, yes. nor yet favor to men of skill. But what, brother Mac? But time and chance happen to them all. So the stuff's going to happen, bottom line. And I actually like it that way because if it was just me doing good all the time, knowing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get good, fine. If it's me doing bad on time, no, I'm going to get, get bad, fine. But when you're doing good and the bad comes, it kind of throws you off a little bit. So if you understand that the Lord is always there, then no matter what happens, you can call upon him, brothers and sisters. Time and chance happens to them all. So let's look at time and chance once again. Jump back to 2 Kings chapter uh, 6. This making, making sense, anybody? 2 Kings chapter 6, we're going to read 24 through 33. Now, we're about to read a horror story, brothers and sisters. It's going to get real ugly right now. But yet, God is going to be there for these people. 2 Kings chapter 6, 24 through 33. And we read where uh, Elisha had took them into Samaria. They left Dothan with the Samaria. And it said that the Syrian army left and then bought them in Israel. But they didn't give up, and they actually came back together to follow them into Samaria, brothers and sisters. This is 2 Kings 6 and 24. What does the Bible say, my brother? And it came to pass after this, that Benadad, king of Syria, gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. So now they besieged Samaria, and when it talks about besieging, brothers and sisters, they actually shut it down. They prevent goods from coming in and out, let alone help coming to help you, and they block off the city. Anytime that happens, famine happens, brothers and sisters. Resources are very few, and people get desperate. And we're about to read that desperate right now. Pay attention to what you're about to read. This happened. Go ahead and read, Mac. And there was a great famine in Samaria. Yes. And behold, they besieged it until the ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver. Mm -hmm. And fourth part of a cab of a dove's dung for five pieces of silver. Now let's, let's, let's take a look at that for a second. I know you can easily read over there and say whatever, okay, an ass's head, uh, a cab of, do of dove's dung. So we know that an ass is a donkey. We know that there is a beast that we cannot eat according to the dietary law. This famine got so bad, people were eating it, brothers and sisters. And they were paying big money for it. It said they sold it for four score pieces of silver. That's big money then and today. But then it says they also, a fourth part of a, a, fourth part of a cab of Doug's done was sold for five pieces of silver. Now, I had to look up cab. Cab is like 2.2 .2 quarts, brothers and sisters. Dove's dung is dove poop, brothers and sisters. Historians have tried to see if, if that meant something different in the Hebrew. And 
all of them even concluded, this is talking about doves done. They, they were eating this, brothers and sisters. That's how bad it got in the famine. And this is how desperate they got. They were paying big money for it. It gets worse, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read, brother. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, yes. there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Yes. Out of the barn flo floor or out of the wine press? No, you said, you said it right, barn flow, because that's what we're dealing with, Israel. They, she's crying out, My king, help us. He said, The Lord can't help you. What can I do? See, at the same time, you can't have that way of thinking because he can help you. And we're going to see that the conclusion of this is that you do call out to the Lord. But he says, I, can, I can't even help you in the barn floor, let alone the wine press. What can I do for you? But this is why she was crying out, brothers and sisters. What the book say, brother? And the king said unto her, what ail of thee? And she answered, this woman said unto me, give thy son that we may eat him today. And we will eat my son tomorrow. Yes, brothers and sisters, it got that tight. The woman looked at her child and said, I tell you what, let's eat your son today. And then we know we're going to need some more tomorrow, so we'll, we'll eat yours tomorrow. Okay, deal. What the, what, what the book say, brother? So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, and what she do? Give thy son that we may eat him. And she had hid her you, son. Are you finna give you Josiah? No. Uh-uh, say about that, Pooh. No, 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 no. She reneged on the deal. You agreed to eat my son and now you don't want to share yours? That's how bad it got, brothers and sisters. This is a time of trouble. And these people need deliverance. Go ahead and read, brother. And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman that he rent his clothes and he passed by upon the wall and the people looked and behold, he had sackcloth upon his flesh. Go ahead. Then he said, God, do so and more also to me if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, shall stand on him this day. They said, and they feeling their way towards Elisha because you led us here, brother. Why are we suffering? I thought you was a man of God. So you got to... Time and chance happens, but don't forget about the Lord. Go ahead and read it, Mac. But Elisha sat in his house, and the elders sat with him, and the king sent a man from before him. But ere the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, See ye how this son of a murderer <laughs> have sent to take away mine head? That, that some of my, is what he was saying, brother. So he said, son of a murderer? Go ahead and read. Look, when the messenger cometh, shut the door, yes. and hold him fast at the door. It's not the sound of his master's feet behind him. Go ahead, Mac. And while he yet talked with them, behold, the messenger came down unto him. What did he say? He said, behold, this evil is of the Lord. What, shall I wait for the Lord any longer? Yes, you should. Sometimes it gets so tough, he wants you to wait on him. Be still, know that I am God. Should we wait on God any longer? Yes, brother, because he's the one that can deliver you. God knows what's going down. He hears your cry. So we're going to stay in the same second Kings, but roll right to the seventh chapter. We're going to read verses 1 through 10 and skip to 12. Because, again, we saw the uh, desperation of the people. We see what they're dealing with. It looks, it looks like a lose-lose a situation, brothers and sisters. Now with the God of Israel working in the background. This is second Kings 7 and 1. What does the book say, brother? Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Yes. Thus said the Lord, tomorrow no, about... No, 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 next year. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. About this time yes. shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Now, y'all notice how he flipped it? Before, it was all this silver you got to pay for some trash. But for the stuff you need, you're going to pay one shekel. That's it. That's it. One shekel for this, one for that. Tomorrow. Now, mind you, they in a situation just like the young brother. I don't see uh, who's going to be here for us. Open his eyes, Lord. He can see the army there. Now, Alicia's saying, you're going to open your eyes again, and tomorrow this is all going to change, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read, Matt. Then a Lord, then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, yes. Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? Uh huh. And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. And this is how much of a guarantee Elisha gave him. The brother said, Can God open up windows of heaven? He sure can. And just to prove it to you, he's going to do it. And then you're not going to live long enough to even eat 
this uh, blessing. That's how much uh, powerful uh, this God of Israel is. So watch how the story unfolds. Go ahead with verse 3, brother. And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. Yeah. And they said one to another, why sit we here until we die? Read. If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city. Yeah. We shall die there. Uh-huh. And if we sit here, we die also. <laughs> what they do? Now, therefore, come, let us fall unto the host of Assyrians. Mm -hmm. If they save us alive, we shall live. Uh -huh. And if they kill us, we shall but die. So I don't know if y'all familiar with lepers, but leprosy is a very serious condition, especially back then, because you were actually an outcast. Your body broke out, your hair would, uh, you would get scabs on your head, your hair would turn a blondish, whitish color, and people would say, stay away. Some historians say that lepers would even tell you, hey, I'm unclean, I'm unclean, don't come near me. So they, they weren't allowed to live in the township. That's why they're outside the gate. So they said, well, why, if we go into the town, there's a famine there, so let's go to the Syrians. If they kill us, then we'll be dead, but maybe we can make it if we go in there. Let's just see. Go ahead and read, Mac. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. There was no what there? No man there. But this is the camp of the Syrians. I mean, they, we just saw them coming for us. Where they at? Once again, God working in his background, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. For the Lord had made the host of Assyrians to hear a noise of chariots yes. and a noise of horses. Yes. Even the noise of a great host. And what they say. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel have hired against <laughs> us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Brothers and sisters, the Lord just made it sound like people were coming and they ran. This is not no bold speaker here. This is the God of Israel. They ain't beats by Dre, beats by God, brothers and sisters, okay? This is the Lord coming in, and he's delivering them by making it sound like horses are coming. They were so ignorant, they said the king of Israel didn't hire the Hittites and the Egyptians to come. No, the God of Israel has came in to deliver his people because the servant of God cried out to God and said, God, help us. Again, call out to the Lord in bad situations. Make it plain, Mac. Wherefore, they arose and fled in the twilight mm -hmm. and left their tents and mm -hmm. their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, yes. and fled for their life. What about the lepers? And when the lepers came to the uttermost parts of the camp, yes. they went into, into one tent. And what they do? And did eat and drink. Yes, sir. And carried this silver and gold and <laughs> raiment. Yes, sir. And went and hid it. Uh -huh. And came again and entered into another tent. And carried this also and went and hid it. I can see them lepers, man. I got this bad skin, but I'm finna put this nice cute suit on right here. Yes, just scratching. That's all right. I tell them it's cheap, cheap wool, Mac. But they eating and drinking, but you see they hid it. They're like, look, man, we, <laughs> it's a hole for me right here. All right. But sometimes, look, not sometimes, when God bless you with something, let somebody else get blessed by it now. Share the wealth. Go ahead and read, Mac. Then they said one to another, mm -hmm. we do not well. See there, we can't, it's wrong now. Let, let's, let's not be selfish. Go ahead and read. This day is a day of good tidings. Yes. And we hold our peace. Mm -hmm. If we tarry to the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Amen. Now therefore come that we may go and tell the king's household. Go ahead, Mac. So they came and called unto the port of the city. Yes. And told them saying, we came to the camp of the Syrians. And behold, there was no man there. Right. Neither voice of man, yes. but horses tied, and asses tied, and the tents as they were. So they come out, hey, y'all, ain't nobody out there. They are gone. Now, a lot of times somebody be like, man, I don't want no leper near me. You get hungry enough, come on, lep, lep on in, leper, come on. You know, this is good tidings, brothers and sisters. The same way that in a situation that you tell somebody else, no, it ain't as bad as you thought it was. God blessed me. He healed me from this sickness. He helped me with my finances. He got my mind on the right track, keeping his commandments. This is how God works for us, brothers and sisters. So he said, hey, tell everybody that it's plenty here. Now, they still didn't believe him, and they didn't have that many resources. So they, they, the book said they had five horses to their name. So they said, let's get the five horses and go see what's going on. So let's see what was going on. Skip down and read 12 through 16. Go ahead. And the king arose in the night mm -hmm. and said unto his servants, I will now show you what the Syrians have done to us. Yes. They know that we are be hungry. Yeah. Therefore, they are gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, when they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. Go ahead. And one of his servants answered and said, 
Let some take, I pray thee, five of the horses that remain, mm -hmm. which are left in the city. Mm -hmm. Behold, they are as the multitude of Israel, <laughs> and are left in it. Yes. Behold, I say, they are even as all the multitude of the Israelites that are consumed, and let us send and see. See, they still didn't believe them. They were like, nah, they probably hiding, and then when we get out there, they go ambushes, and we dead. And we got these little five horses, it's just as many Israelites alive as these horses. But got to have faith that God has intervened for us, brothers and sisters, even though we can't see the outcome. Go ahead and read, brother. They took, therefore, two chariot horses, mm -hmm. and the king sent after the host of the Syrians, saying, go and see. Uh -huh. And they went after them unto Jordan. And lo, all the way was full of garments and vessels, which the Syrians had cast away in their haste. And the messengers returned and told the king. Go ahead. And the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel. No, for 50 pieces of silver. For a shekel. Didn't he say that, brothers and sisters? Yeah. Tomorrow, it's all going to change. So save the silver for another day, for a rainy day, and just pull out those shekels. And we're going to now make these... Cheap purchases. Go ahead and read, brother. And two measures of barley for a shekel. According to what? According to the word of the Lord. I told you. The book told you God will deliver you during times of trouble, brothers and sisters. And it doesn't stop there. Turn your Bibles to Acts the 11 chapter. Because just in case it may be well, God's going to do it, but I'm going to have to do a bunch of work because I don't have the resources God will bless other people to bless you, brothers and sisters. Just give him a chance to do it. And we're going to read about people doing right by the, by, by the Lord, even though times throughout the whole world are falling apart. I mean, are, are, are going bad and everything's falling apart. This is Acts 11, 19 through 30. Acts 11, this is talking about the church in Antioch. When you get it, my brother, go ahead and read. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, traveled as far as Phineas and Cyprus and Antioch, mm -hmm. preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Read, Mac. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. Uh -huh. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Notice we see people handling the business, teaching the word, doing outreach, bringing people into the church. Go ahead and read, brother. The end tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem. In Rome. In Jerusalem. Just want to put that out there because people get confused, especially right this month right here. Go ahead and read. And they set, sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch. Read, Mac. Whoa, when he who? came. Who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad yes. and extorted them all. That with purpose of heart, they would cleave unto the Lord. Notice we, everybody getting closer to God right here. We know some benefits are here. We are staying close to God right now. Go ahead and read. For he was a good man. Yes, he was. And full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. Yes. And much people was added unto the Lord. What? Go ahead. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. Mm -hmm. And when he had found him, he brought him Unto Antioch. Yes. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled with themselves with the church and taught much people. Uh huh. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. See, don't feel bad with that title, Christians. Mm -mm. Use it, use it, use it. Because what happens is you show who you're following, and then people who say that they are Christians and they don't follow the Lord, they may consider, well, what am I doing wrong? I just finished uh, bowing down to a tree, but. This brother, this sister talking about Passover, unleavened bread, the atonement. I'm home. I like to eat. God will sustain you. You know, this is how we ought to be proud of such a title. People say this is a derogatory term. I can't read that in the Bible. Can't read it one time. Go ahead and read, brother. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. Now watch this, brother. Says, go ahead and read. And there stood up one of them named Agabus, mm -hmm. and signified by the Spirit that there should be a great dearth throughout all the world, Yes, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Now, brothers and sisters, we've just read about a famine in 2 Kings, but the word dearth is very serious. Because dearth indicates not only there's no food, there's nothing, no resources. Like, even thinking of getting some water, it ain't there. A dearth is everything is off the table. 
But watch what happens with the servants of God. Go ahead and read. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. Yes. Which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. So the Lord blessed people with those same necessary resources, and they were able to give to all those Christians who have cleaved to the Lord, brothers and sisters. So even though it may seem like we have to do a lot of things for ourselves, even we don't have it, somebody else might have it. Well, brother, I don't have a car to get to class. Plenty of people at the class has got a car. Just ask somebody. You know, well, I'm hungry. Okay, well, we'll have a leftover plate for you. All that stuff comes into play when you're dealing with service of God, brothers and sisters, and the God of Israel, by the way. So this is what we need to remember, and we shouldn't even be worried about whether we can get this stuff. And the Lord's going to tell us. Let's go over to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Matthew 6, we're going to read 25 through 34, because the Lord Jesus is going to have to tell us the same thing. I will deliver you during times of trouble. Matthew 6, we'll read 25 through 34. Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Make sure y'all are awake. I ain't seen nobody yawning either. I'm going to look you right in your mouth and be like, Uncle, you're yawning. Okay, that's I like that we eat. All right. Matthew 6, 25 through 34. What the book say, brother? Therefore I say unto you, mm -hmm. take no thought for your life. Yes. What you shall eat, mm -hmm. or what you shall drink. Yes. Nor yet for your body, mm -hmm. what you shall put on. Yes. It's not life more than the meat, and the body more body than raiment. Absolutely it is. Because again, we read early in the song what God uh, excuse me, in Joe, where he questioned, well, what is it what's so important about man? Man is going to become something, brothers and sisters. So the mankind is so much more important than meat and body than rain, uh, uh, body in the raiment. Go ahead and read, Mac. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? We are. Go ahead and read. Which of you by talking taking which of you by taking thought can add one cubic unto his stature nobody can i don't care how much you try to will it in your mind you can't make yourself taller well i'm five six but you'll be five six when they bury you too or maybe a little shorter with osteoporosis you know what i'm saying so you can't add one cubit to your height go ahead brother and why take ye thought for raiment mm -hmm. consider the lilies of the field how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Read, Mac. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Go ahead. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, yes. which today is, yes. and tomorrow is cast into the oven, what, Mac? shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? No, man, I can the Lord say I got little faith because you worried about him providing for you, that's why. And we are all guilty of it. We sit around, and when we get to ourselves, and we worry about stuff. It's hard because we're flesh and blood, but God's going to come in. He will deliver you in times of trouble, brothers and sisters. I remember I caught myself uh, uh, in the old building, coming to class, and, you know, when I'm always worried about something, my forehead like a pack of hot dogs, it get wrinkled up so bad. And Brother Ezra was teaching that day. I walked through the door and said, oh, partner, uh-uh-uh-uh, whatever it is on your mind, you leave it right out there. You come in here with a clear mind and be ready to worship the God of Israel. Hot dogs went away. I came in with a smooth face. So that's how the Lord wants our, our minds to be. Don't worry about this stuff. I got you. Go ahead and read, Mac. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Or whether with all shall we be clothed? Uh -huh. For all these things do the Gentiles seek. Yes. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these but things. But what's the most important thing, Matt? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Yes. And all these things shall be added unto you. Finish it up at 34, Mac. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. What? For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Yes. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Don't you worry about tomorrow. It's enough hell tomorrow to keep you busy. You focus on God, brothers and sisters, and he will deliver you in times of trouble. Focus on today. Carpe diem. That's about the only Latin I can speak. Seize the day. T turn over to 2 Timothy chapter 3. It doesn't stop there, brothers and sisters. Deliverance during times of trouble. 2 Timothy chapter 3, we're going to read 1 through 7, and then 11 through 14. We do suffer. That is a guarantee. 
Well, Marvin Gaye say money, tax, and troubles. Yeah. And so we deal with it. Second Timothy chapter 3, we'll read 1 through 7 and then skip to 11. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 7, and then 11 through 14. Second Timothy 3 and 1, what the books say, my brother. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Yes. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, mm -hmm. covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. And mind you, brothers and sisters, this covers everybody. Oh, see, you can only be disobedient when you're a little boy. No, 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 no. You can get dumb and dishonor your parents as a grown person. Honor your father and your mother. You wouldn't be here without them. Go ahead and read, Mac. Without natural affection. Uh-huh. Truce breakers. Yes. False accusers. Mm -hmm. Incontinent. Yes. Fierce. Despisers of those that are good. Read, Mac. Traitors. Heedy. High-minded. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. If we ain't seeing that right now, I don't know when we're going to see it. It's like the whole world just said, there is no God. And they'll say it. Me, uh, me and my wife were watching a TV program and the guy was on there, he was of a different persuasion, a sodomite, but that's not neither here nor there per se. But he said, you know what, we shouldn't have no morals, we should be able to do what we want to do. That's a scary mindset to uh, have, brothers and sisters, because the sky is the limit and the lake of fire is your destination with that kind of thinking. Go ahead and read, brother. Having a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof, mm -hmm. from such turn away. And you run away from these people. Go ahead and read. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with divers' lust. And I want to jump on this because it's no knock at women. But you are silly when you fall for the okie doke for somebody trying to pull you from God. You stay grounded. You're like, no, partner, I'm not rolling with that. No, sis, I don't do that no more. The only thing opening after 12 is my Bible. All right? You keep yourself chaste the best way you can, and you deal with the God of Israel. Amen. Otherwise, you will become a silly woman. But we know we ain't dealing with that in here, right, sisters? Right. One, of the, uh, one of the brothers, right? No, brother, talk to the sisters now. <laughs> what verse was that, Matt? In the six. Go ahead and read. Ever learning yeah. and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Read about these brothers. Go ahead. Oh, no. What verse was that? In the seven. Okay, skip down and read 11 through 14. Go ahead. You're going to suffer this. Go ahead and read. Persecutions, uh -huh. afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, and Lystra. Read, Mac. Which persecutions I endured. I endured. But out of them all, what, brother? the Lord delivered the me. The Lord will deliver you in times of trouble. Go ahead and read, Mac. Yeah. And all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Come on, Matt. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But what should we do, brother? But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. So you stay keeping this stuff, brothers and sisters. Stay in these commandments because it's actually going to get worse and worse and more people will come to deceive us. But when you are in the word of God, you will be the one that can fight the, that, that, that uh, deceiver away because he is being led by the ultimate deceiver, Satan the devil. So understand your obedience is what protects you, brothers and sisters. There was 14, right? Yes. Turn your Bibles to Acts the 12th chapter. We ain't got much longer. Just want to give you this six-piece nugget right here called Del Deliverance During Times of Trouble. Acts 12. We're going to read one through six and we're going to skip. And no, you can't go uh, uh, buy uh, an ass's head and eat it. I'm like, man, Brother Josh covered that scripture. I wonder if we can eat. No. I say, we ain't going to eat the dung, but dove dung, but we No, you can't eat the ass head either. And the babies, Lord, not the, not the babies. All right, this is Acts 12. We'll read 1 through 6, and then we'll skip to 10. Acts 12, 1 through 6, and we will skip to 10. Our beloved brother Peter is being sought out to get locked up, like they do a lot of our brothers and sisters today. Go ahead and read with verse 1, my brother. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex a certain of the church. Yes. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Uh-huh. And because he saw it pleased the Jews. It did what to the Jews? It pleased the Jews. Lord have mercy, Jesus. They actually got a rush off the sin. Their own fellow Israelites killed, brothers and sisters. That is demonic in all facets. Go ahead and read, brother. 
he proceeded further to take Peter also. Yes. Then were the days of eleven bread. Go ahead, brother. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in the prison and delivered him to four quartering neons of soldiers yeah. to keep him, mm -hmm. intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. And know that they ain't telling us we, they kept Easter. Just to give you the time of what it was. It just said these were the days of unleavened bread. All right. Food for thought. Go ahead and read, brother. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. But what, brother? But prayer made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. He ain't able to call and say, you know, put his hand on the glass window and be like, hey, man, can y'all pray for me? The church knew what to do. Let's get together, uh, have a convocation, and let us pray for our brother Peter in this bad situation. Go ahead and read, brother. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Yes. Bound with two chains. Uh-huh. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. So he is being kept in prison, and the angel of the Lord comes in to intervene. He actually comes in, slaps Peter uh, on his side, says, get up, brother, get your sandals on. We're going to walk out of here. Because God is coming to deliver you in times of trouble. Skip down and read 10 through 18, my brother. What the book say? When they were past the first and the second war, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city. And how did he open it, brother? Which opened them of his own accord. Yes. They went out and passed on through one street. And forthwith the angel departed from him. Look at, look at the power of God, brothers and sisters. Angel said, get up, follow me. They went through the first war. Prison wars are pretty big, brothers and sisters. Yet, nobody is around to disrupt this brother walking out. First ward, second ward. Then you got the big gate, and they say Peter was able to open it up by his own hand, brothers and sisters. God is delivering him. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 11. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and have delivered me out of the hand of Herod. Yes. And from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Because he thought he was having a vision. That's how I'm, like, I ain't finna, I'm, I'm locked up. No, brother, you are free at last. Let's walk out of here. So he now is going to go and let the people know that he's free. Go ahead and read, brother. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John. Yes. Whose surname was Mark. Mm-hmm. Where many were gathered together praying. And what happened? And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. Yes. And when she, knew, when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. That's amazing. She, his sister was so excited. I would be like, sis, let me in. I just, I just came out of jail now. You know, jumpsuit and all. So he, 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 he's on the door. She got excited. She went back and told everybody. How they react, brother? And they said unto her, thou art mad. Girl, you crazy. Israel talking. Girl, you crazy. What, what the book say? But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. They said, they, it is his angel. Mm -hmm. But Peter continued knocking. <laughs> and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. And what Peter say to him? But he beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace. Y'all be quiet now. Hush, I just got out of prison. Keep your voice down. All right? Hold your peace. And what else, brother? Declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. Yes. And he said, go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Verse 18, Mac. Now as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers. What was become of Peter? So all kind of ruckus. He, he, he's escaped. Sound the alarm. But Peter said the Lord got him out. But I thought we read that the angel got him out. It's all the Lord coming in and delivering him in this time of trouble, brothers and sisters. And so they try to figure out what's going on. Herod's angry. He actually kills the soldiers who dropped the ball. Okay? But the one thing about the Lord is you are not going to get by for the wrong that you do. Skip down and read 21 through 24 because Herod, they throw an event for him. Everybody got their finest on. Herod dressed real clean. And Herod lacks one big thing. That's humility. Go ahead and read 21, my brother. And upon a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne, and made an oration unto them. Mm -hmm. And the people gave a shouting, saying, Is it the voice of a god and not of a man? Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Mankind just can't just get over himself. This is the voice of God and not a man. What the book say, brother? And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory, 
and he was eaten of worms and gave up the goat. And what about the word of God, brother? But the word of God grew and multiplied. See, see, man's going to fail. He's going to drop there, but the word of God will abide forever, and therefore it will continue to go out there throughout the world, brothers and sisters, because the Lord is not going to let you get by. So that is him shutting Herod down. Now, in order for us to understand what happened, let's go to Psalm 91. And we're going to start at verse 2 and we're going to skip down. Because this, in context, is talking about when you go into the wilderness, but it applies even to our situation, brothers and sisters. Psalm 91, 2 through 4, and then we'll skip down to verse 9. Now, I wouldn't advise nobody going out and getting locked up because depending on what you do, the Lord might be telling you to stay in there. But that was Peter's situation. Psalm 91, 2 through 4, and we'll skip down to verse 9. Psalm 91 and 2. Make it plain, brother. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Go ahead, brother. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence, uh -huh. he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. What about his truth? His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. That word of God is going to fight for you, brothers and sisters. Believe it or not. Skip down to verse 9 and read, my brother. Why is this happening to us? Go ahead. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high. Thy habitation. You chose to spiritually dwell with God, brothers and sisters. You let him come into your mind and you're keeping those commandments. Skip down and read 14 through 16. What the book say? Because he has set his love upon me. Yes. Therefore will I deliver him. God talking. Go ahead and read. I will set him on high because he have known my name. Go ahead, Mac. He shall call upon me. And I will answer him. Uh huh. I will be with him in trouble. Yes. I will deliver him and honor him. What else, Mac? With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Oh, so we're talking about getting saved now. Okay, okay. So do what God say, he'll fight for you and he'll lead you toward salvation. Not a bad deal, brothers and sisters. Not a bad deal at all. Plus he said he'll deliver you in times of trouble. And I didn't set that up that way. I actually... Uh, that was an accident, but that's the Lord working. So this is him being your shield and buckler, brothers and sisters. But as he's fighting for us, that is not ruin it ourselves. Turn your Bibles to Jeremiah, the fifth chapter. We'll read 22 through 25. Because just as much as God can set us up to do well, we can blow the mission with our behavior. And he's going to use Israel as an example. But this applies to anybody when God's trying to bless you. Jeremiah 5, 22 through 25. Jeremiah 5, 22 through 25. Let us take heed to this and understand that we can mess it up for ourselves. 5 and 22. What did it say? Fear you not me, mm -hmm. says the Lord. Mm -hmm. Will you not tremble at my presence? which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree mm -hmm. that it cannot pass it. Uh -huh. And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail? Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it? Because I'm in control. Even though you see the waves acting crazy, it's only so far they're going to go because I am telling them how far to go. They might come and knock down the condo on, on, the, on the beach. They won't make the downtown. Because I'm running things. And so if I'm running things that way, why are we as servants of God, as we, as we say, why are we not fearing him, brothers and sisters, talking to me too? If he can do all that, go ahead and read, brother. But this people have a revolting and a rebellious heart. Mm -hmm. They are revolted and gone. Neither. Neither say they in their heart. Let us now fear the Lord our God that giveth rain. Yes. Both the former and the latter yes. in his season. Yes. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. And what about our iniquities, man? Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. We are the problem, is what this is telling us. He can deliver us out of any situation whether it looks like it's impossible or even very possible, but when we misbehave and we break his commandments, we actually withhold those good things from us by sinning, by breaking his commandments, brothers and sisters. And then he can't deliver us. So that is what we need to realize. We are our own worst enemy. But there is a promise, brothers and sisters. 
that he gives us as we go to Hebrews, the sixth chapter. A promise that he, he, he has for us that he uses Abraham as an example of fulfilling promises. And we're going to learn a lot in this short little reading here. Actually, it ain't that short, but it's short to me. Hebrews, the sixth chapter, we're going to read 4 through 20. It's going to make sense, I promise. Hebrews 6, 4 through 20, he's going to let us know we got to endure, brothers and sisters. And we haven't gotten everything yet, so we need to rely on him and allow him to deliver us in this life. Hebrews, the sixth chapter, we will read 4 through 20. Hebrews 6, 4 through 20. Let everybody get there. Is it making sense for everybody? All right. Six and four, what does the Bible say, Mac? For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Yes. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If? If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So for those of those individuals that have found the truth and spit on it and stepped on it and walked away, got a problem. Because you start bouncing back and forth, being lukewarm, it's like you crucifying Jesus all over again and you made that death a shame. And Jesus died for us one time, brothers and sisters. And so as he's delivering you, don't take it for granted. Don't fall back and say, I don't found this word, but I want to get back into the world. It's, it doesn't work that way. Let us stay consistent and let us walk this walk. Go ahead and read, Mac. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed, receiving blessings from God. But there's a flip side. What is that, Mac? But that which bears thorns and briars is rejected. Yes. And is nigh to cursing. And what about his end? Whose end is to be burned. And that just ain't talking about outside when you cleaning up the yard burning limbs. This is an everlasting fire. Those that are righteous are like the rain that drinketh uh, uh, and the herbs that are uh, uh, meet for them who it is dressed and they receive the blessing from God. But if you are wicked, you are like one that bear thorns and briars and you are rejected. And then you are like a cursing and your end is to be burned. Go ahead and read, brother. But <clears throat> beloved, we are persuaded better things of you. Yes. And things that accompany salvation. Though we thus speak, go ahead, Mac. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work mm -hmm. and labor of love, yes, which you have showed toward His name, yes, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Read on, Mac. And we do desire, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to full to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Unto the end, so you don't stop. You keep going. So God can continue to deliver you along the way because he's got salvation at the end of the road. Go ahead and read, brother. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit, inherit the, the promises. promises. Go ahead, Mac. For when God made the promise to Abraham, yes. because he could swear by no greater, yes. he swear by himself. And I love that phrase because that's what they're saying is, if God promises it, can't nobody do better than God when he got some for you. And he's promising Abraham something because Abraham had to be pulled from his father's house, led somewhere he ain't never been, promised that he's going to have a child and that he's going to have a seed, not seeds being many, but a seed that will come and all the nations of the world should be blessed. That's so a loaded promise, but can't nobody do it better than God. Go ahead and read. Saying, surely, blessings I will bless thee. Yes. And multiplying I will multiply Go thee. Go ahead, Mac. And so, after he had patiently endured. After he had patiently endured, what? He obtained the promise. If we patiently endure until the end, we will receive the promise. But we don't have it yet. Because he that endured to the end, the same shall be saved. Go ahead and read, brother. For me and verily swear by the greater. Uh-huh. And an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. And that's how we are as men. We can give you a little promise at nine. I'll give you five dollars next week. Okay, five dollars. God has a greater swearing he can do. Go ahead and read, brother. Wherein God willing, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise. Come on, Mac. The, 
the immaturability yes. of his counsel uh -huh. confirmed it by an oath. And what are these two immutable things, Mac? That by two immutable things yes. is which it was impossible for God to lie. Impossible for God to lie. We might have a strong consolation. Come on, Mac. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Lay hold upon the hope. Go ahead. What about this hope, Which brother? hope we have as an anchor of the soul. Keeps us held down so we want to have it. Go ahead. Both sure and steadfast. Yes. Which entereth into that with the with Within the veil. And we're going to enter in within the veil because we got somebody who has led the way, who done laid the groundwork. He died and became God, and we can do the same thing. And who is he, Matt? Go ahead. Whether the forerunner is for us, yes. entered even Jesus. Even Jesus. Come made on, a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now we got the example. Now we're going to walk this thing down in righteousness. So that God, with all the delivering he does, we got an end goal. Salvation, Jesus is the one that kicks it off for us, brothers and sisters. All right, so let's roll right over to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. We're going to read 4 through 12. We're almost there. The forerunner. The Lord, the Lord got a 40 time out this world. Can't beat him in a track meet. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, we'll read 4 through 12. This is, now that we know about this Jesus, he's going to come back, brothers and sisters. And guess what? You have people that go try to stand in the way, and they, number one, don't want you to be, to be delivered by God, but they're also going to give you some problems by serving God. He's going to deal with them too. This is 2 Thessalonians 1, we'll read 4 through 12. 2 Thessalonians 1, 4 through 12, what does the book say, my brother? So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. That you endure, go ahead. Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God. Yes. That ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. Yes. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. See there? So somebody comes and tries to throw you off. God said, I got him. I got him. And I would deliver you in this time of trouble. Because we've read about times of trouble um, in certain uh, avenues of being in a certain place. Or armies coming at you. But if the individual comes, God can narrow it down and get them too. So he says, I'm going to get them. Go ahead and read, brother. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When what? When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Come on, Matt. In a flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God. Uh-huh. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what will he do? Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Mac, reading that book. I'll tell you what. So we see here that the Lord says, I'm going to get them back. And these people don't even obey the gospel. But I like that because people always look at the gospel like it's all New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But we know this event happens in Isaiah 66 when he gets them people for eating the pig. So the dietary law is for the gospel. All the commandments are the gospel because it's telling you to repent because the kingdom of heaven is coming. That's all gospel. Good news, brothers and sisters. What verse was that? In the nine. Go ahead and read. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints. Yes. And to be admired in all of them that believe. Yes. Because our testimony among you was believed in that day. In that day and this day. Go ahead and read. Wherefore also we pray always for you. Come on, Matt. That our God would count you worthy of this calling. Yes. And fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness. And the work of faith with power. That the name. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you. And what else, man? And ye in him. Come on. According to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So, brothers and sisters, as you keep dealing with the Lord and abide in him, you locked in now. And by you even keeping the commandments, you are showing that Christ is in you. So if you don't keep his commandments, I wonder who else is in you, brothers and sisters. That's that wicked one that you need to keep yourself away from. So this is the Lord coming back. This is the Lord fighting for us. This is the Lord actually having salvation right there for us on the silver platter. And this same deliverance is somewhere very familiar that we all are going to quote once this lesson's over. Let's go to Matthew, the sixth chapter. We got a handful more to go. Matthew 6. 5 through 13. Pay attention to the deliverance in this prayer. Because there's a way you should pray, brothers and sisters. And you can have your own customized prayer. No problem. 
But the Lord said, above all, pray this way. And there's a way you do it too. We're going to address that because some folks like to get up and sound like a, a, a turkey babbling all day. This is, Saint, I mean, this is Matthew, the sixth chapter, 5 through 13. Matthew, the sixth chapter, 5 through 13. What does the Bible say, brother? And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. How they do. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets. Yes. That they may be seen of men. Yes. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. And that's the only benefit they're going to have of their prayer. And they love to have their eyes closed, their hands open, smiling. All they think about is that money they're getting. That's why they get their hands out like this. Oh, yes. Your season. This is your time. You are loosed. No, brother, your pockets are loose and you want some more money. That's all it is. So you don't try to look so in the open, brothers and sisters, and be, uh, uh, get all the attention from men. That's your reward. Go ahead and read, Mac. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. Okay. And when thou hast shut thy door, yes. pray to the Father which is in secret. And what he go do? And thy Father which is in secret shall reward thee openly. Come on, Mac. But when ye pray, mm -hmm. use not vain repetitions. As the heathen do. Uh -huh. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. And actually, it goes beyond the heathen because growing up, I saw Israel. Lord, I got my shoes and got my feet. Mm-hmm. Look, no, man, stop it. it the, the, I, I'm, I'm asleep now, by the way. Wake me up when he's done. Because all that repetition don't mean anything, brothers and sisters. Not saying that, Lord, on Monday you asking the Lord to help you with something. Then next month, Lord, I still need help. That's different. We're talking about just vain repetitions don't mean a hill of beans, brothers and sisters. Okay, go ahead and read, Mac. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before ye ask him. After this manner. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Come on, Mac. Our Father which art in heaven. Yes. Hallowed be thy name. Uh huh. Thy kingdom come. No, we're going up to the kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Pay attention to the Lord's prayer. It's talking to us, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Thy will be done in earth. Yes. As it is in heaven. Come on, Mac. Give us this day our daily bread. That's why Jesus said sufficient is the day thereof. I got enough for you today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Give us this day our daily bread. Go ahead. And forgive us of our debt. Yes. As we forgive our debtors. If you want God to forgive you, you got to forgive your brother and your enemy. Yeah. No respect of persons, brothers and sisters. Give, uh, 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 and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Go ahead. And lead us not into temptation. But do what, Mac? But deliver us from evil. Deliver us during times of trouble. Go ahead. For thine is the kingdom. Yes, it is. And the power. Yes. And the glory forever. Yes. Amen. Let the church say amen to that. Amen. amen. Read that book, Mac. Amen. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of brothers bragging on your reading, brother. I said, oh, yeah, that's, that's Mac now. Like Brother Jeff said, the Mac attack. Praise the Lord. All right. Pra that's right, brother. Praise the Lord, brother. Roll over to Matthew, the 24th chapter, brothers and sisters. We're almost there. Just want to show you he will deliver, brothers and sisters. And notice, through all that promise he gave us, he said, you got to forgive your brothers and your sisters. You ain't getting by. Matthew 24, we will read uh, 29 through 31, then 44 through 51. The Lord is actually coming back, as we said. A lot of dramas will go down, mm. and then he appears to deliver his people, and he will do it. Matthew 24, 29 through 31, and then we will read 44 through 51. Matthew 24 and 29, when you get a brother, feed the sheep. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Yes. And the stars shall fall from heaven mm -hmm. and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Come on, Mac. And then shall appear the signs of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall appear the signs of the Son. You got some people thinking, well, I, I saw Jesus last week. No, it must have been some hippie because the, the way the world got him painted, it's got to be him. You know, but the Lord is coming back, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read, brother. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Yes. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Hold on for a second, man. I, I thought everybody loved sweet Jesus, Mary's baby. You know, but see, they waited for this. They waited for this Jesus that brushes hair like this. But we know the one that's going <laughs> to do his hair like this and pat that afro. 
That's who's coming, and the world is shocked by that appearance. He's coming back, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Yes. And they shall gather together his elect from four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now we are getting ready to go home, brothers and sisters. Skip down and read verses 44 through 50, 51. Go ahead. Therefore be ye also ready. This is to us, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. For in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh, uh -huh. who then is a faithful and wise servant, mm -hmm. whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, yes. to give them meat in due season. So you need to be that wise servant that know I need to keep the commandments because he's coming back. Make sure I'm in order when he comes back. So when he comes back, I am clean as a whistle. I am a chaste virgin to the Lord. Go ahead and read, brother. Blessed is that servant yeah, he is. whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Yes. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over his goods. That's the benefit. Go ahead. But, and if, that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. Uh-huh. And shall begin to smite his fellow servants. And to eat and drink with the drunken. Basically, if you say, I'm not going to keep the commandments, God ain't coming back. I'm finna YOLO. You only live once in this flesh, but you will live forever. And through your disobedience, you will burn forever. And the Lord's going to tell you that. Go ahead and read, Matt. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him. Mm -hmm. And in an hour that he is not aware of. What's going to happen? And shall cut him asunder uh -huh. and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. And what else, man? That shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In the lake of fire. So you won't be delivered. He will make sure he delivers you into that furnace and you'll burn forever. Let us not fall into this category, brothers and sisters. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Because since we know that he's coming back now. We've read how we should behave ourselves, but let's look once again in how we should act before he comes. Can't get comfortable and say, when the Lord get back here, I'll straighten up. Just like I heard a, 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 a preacher say, he heard a preacher in the barbershop say, you know, when God come back, he going to give everybody five minutes to get right. No, sir, no, ma'am. He's telling you to get right right now. Five minutes. What's the sense of living right back if you'll give me five minutes? You can turn up. You can be drunk. Yeah, and if you turn up, you'll be still drunk because that, uh, that liquor ain't worn off in that five minutes either. First Thessalonians 5, we're going to read verses 2 through 6 and skip. First Thessalonians 5, 2 through 6. When you get it, my brother, make it plain. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Mm-hmm. For when they shall say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction come up upon them. Yes. As travail upon a woman with child. Go ahead. And they shall not escape. Mm -hmm. But ye brethren are not in the darkness that, that they should overtake you as a thief. Why is that? Ye are all the children of light. Yeah. And the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Go ahead. Therefore, let us not sleep. As do others, but let us watch and be sober. See, when you're in this word, it is a light to you, so you are always seeing what's going on. If you are rejecting the word of God, you are in darkness, so you don't know what's going on. So you'll say stuff like he was born on December the 25th. You'll say that he rose up early Sunday morning. You'll say we can eat whatever we want, and you'll say God is not coming back. Matter of fact, you'll say there is no God because you choose to abide in darkness. Let us not be those individuals, brothers and sisters. Skip down and read 9 through 11, Mac. For God have not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Go ahead. Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Yes, sir. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. So the Lord died for us. Therefore, because he did, let us edify one another, encourage one another to stay in his word. If somebody don't come to class, call them. Hey, sis. Hey, brother, I'm checking on you. If you see your brother and sister and they look like they're dealing with some mental problems, go and put your arm around them. Maybe that's all they need. Let us comfort one another, brothers and sisters, and the Lord will deliver us in times of trouble. Skip down and read 14 through 22, Matt. Go ahead. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, mm -hmm. comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. Come on, Matt. 
See that none render evil for evil unto any man. Unto Israelites only. Unto any man. Come on, Mac. But ever follow that which is good. Yes. Both among yourselves. And to who? And to all men. And to all men. Go ahead, Mac. Rejoice evermore. Come on. Pray without ceasing. And what? And everything give thanks. Why? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. What about the spirit? Quench not the spirit. Come on. Despise not prophesying. Uh-huh. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Uh huh. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Now that ain't motivating. I don't know what is. Okay, so go. That's a little punch list you can go down if you feel like, well, I don't forgot what God wanted me to do. Go right here and run it down again and again, brothers and sisters. Micah the fourth chapter, and we got two more places after this. I almost made it to all sixty-six books today, Mac. Yes, sir. Micah four. We we'll read one through eight. Because this is the end, brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. Micah 4, 1 through 8. Quench not the spear, brothers. You got that word here? Let it out. When, you, when your car listens to that foul music, you let it out. Might be wide open singing all that stuff. Let the spear come out when the Lord working with you. Michael 4, 1 through 8. When you get it, Mac, make it plain. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. Come on. And many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up into the mountain of the Lord mm-hmm. and to the house of the God of Jacob. Yes. And he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. This is not ever going to occur in Rome. This is here on the earth. This is in Jerusalem. Go ahead and read, Mac. And he shall judge among many people. Yes. And rebuke strong nations afar off. Yes. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares. Uh-huh. And their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Go ahead, Mac. But they shall sit every man under his vine. And under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts have spoken it. So, brothers and sisters, it's going to come a time you ain't going to want to fight no more because God would have put some knots on your head. You're like, whoa, this is the God of Israel. He has come to set peace on earth, and the world will be at peace. The book says it'll be quiet. For once, it'll be quiet around here. Go ahead and read, brother. For all people will walk, everyone in the name of his God. And we will walk in the name of our of the Lord our God forever and ever. And that don't mean he's gonna allow idolatry, brothers and sisters. He just lets you know he's in control when it says all men will walk after their God. No, that, that ain't happening. All this could be done away with. Go ahead and read. In that day, says the Lord, will I assemble her that halted, mm-hmm. and I will gather her that is driven out. Go ahead. And her that I have afflicted. I will make her that halt of the remnant. Yes. And her that was cast off a, a strong, strong nation. nation. Come on, Mac. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion. How long? From henceforth, even forever. Finish at verse 8. And thou, O tower of the flock. Tower of the flock. The stronghold of the daughter of Zion. Come on, Mac. Unto thee shall it come. Mm-hmm. Even the first dominion. Yes. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. Also, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. Still ain't going nowhere, Matt. Shall come. Shall come. Revelation, the 22nd chapter. We'll read three verses here. Verse 7 and then 14 and 15. We read it earlier. Got to read it one more time. So the kingdom has come, and it shall be here, and so shall the place of punishment for those who didn't want to be delivered by God. Revelation 22 and 7, what the book say? Behold, I come quickly. Mm-hmm. Blessed is he that keep the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Skip down and read 14 and 15, brother. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So this book that people tell you, don't read Revelation too deep. Now I want to get deep right in it. I'm going to start sinking in it, Mac. It says that you are blessed by keeping the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Then it tells you you are blessed to do his commandments. And it says that you have, a, you have the right to walk in through those gates. Verse 15, Mac. For without our dogs. The people that don't want to do this, they are without our dogs. And sorcerers. Yes. And whoremongers. Mm-hmm. And murderers. And idolaters. And whosoever loveth and make it, they lie. We are not going to beat that dead horse. We understand what the end is. We understand what the end is for the righteous also. Psalm 80 is our last spot. 
Psalm 80, we'll read 3 through 8 and 14 through 19. Psalm 80, 3 through 8, 14 through 19. We've been talking about salvation, and this is why we will receive salvation, brothers and sisters. We talk about keeping commandments, but this will solidify what it's all about. Psalm 80, 3 through 8, and then 14 through 19. Last place, I thank you for your patience. Psalm 80 and 3, what did it say, Mac? Turn us again, O God, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. We are saved. We shall be saved. Go ahead and read, Mac. O Lord God of hosts, mm -hmm. how long will thou be angry against the prayer of thy people? Come on, Mac. Thou feedest them with the bread of tears. Yes. And give them tears to drink in great measure. Come on. Thou makest us a strife unto our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Because they think it's crazy to be obedient to God. It's going to pay off. Read the book. Turn us again, O God of hosts, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. No, we are saved. We shall be saved. Then only got people saying you saved already. Shall, shall, shall. It will be. Endure, endure. Why are people saying we saved, brothers and sisters? We shall be saved. I ain't crazy. I just love this word. Go ahead and read, Mac. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt. Yes. Thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. God has brought this vine out. Let's read more about this vine. 14 through 19. What 14 say about the vine, brother? Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts. Uh-huh. Look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine. And visit this vine. What it say? And the vineyard which thy right hand hath planted. Yes. And the branch that thou made it strong for thyself. Come on. It is burned with fire. Yes. It is cut down. Yes. They perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. What about the man on the right hand? Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand. Uh-huh. Upon the son of man whom thou made it strong for thyself. Because now that you do that, we're close to you, God. We won't leave you. We'll stay right next to you from here going forward. Go ahead and read the next verse. So will not we go back from thee. Mm -hmm. Quicken us, and we will call upon thy name. Finish it up, Mac. Turn us again, O Lord, the yes. God of hosts. Yes. Cause thy face to shine, else, and we shall be saved. And he will deliver you in times of trouble. And their ultimate deliverance is you will be saved. You will become God. You will have salvation. I thank you for your time. Praise the Lord. Thank you.